I was a very bad student. Oh. I didn't have a good GPA. Okay. <laughs> uh, what was your GPA? It was a 2.6. What? <laughs> so I interviewed with Meta, Google, Reddit, Amazon, wow. Microsoft. And out of all these companies, I got rejected 10 times. I'm telling you Microsoft folks, I'm totally <laughs> open to quitting my job, putting that out there. They're watching. Yeah. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome back to another YouTube video. In today's video, we have a special guest, Pooja, who is traveling all the way from Minnesota to Seattle. Some of you probably have seen her already on YouTube because she's pretty viral. Uh, but one thing you already know about her is that she's also a software engineer at Microsoft. So when she told me that she's coming to Seattle, I was like, okay, we need to sit down and we need to record this video because you are awesome. I love watching your YouTube Thanks. videos. Like you're so creative <laughs> and you do it on top of your full-time job. So Pooja, tell us a little bit about yourself. Thanks to Nas for that amazing intro. Um, so my name is Pooja and I work at Microsoft as a full-time engineer. I graduated from UW-Madison six years ago, so I've been in the industry for six years wow. and I work fully remote. I'm kind of a digital nomad, so I travel around a bit as well and yeah, that's awesome. So let me ask you this, how did you become a software engineer? Like, is this something that you knew from very early on you wanted to do? Like, what was that moment for you where you were like, okay, I want to become a software engineer? So it's a funny story, actually. My parents are software engineers. Okay. And they basically, because they were software engineers, I decided I didn't want to be a software engineer. I okay. wanted to go the opposite route. So I went to college and I tried to get into biomedical engineering, okay. but that involved a lot of chemistry. Okay. And I quickly realized I was not good at chemistry. Okay. And so then I ended up taking a computer science class okay. and I really liked it. It was my intro to computer science class. It was a lot of fun. You liked the intro to computer science? I heard I like those classes are like really hard. Yeah, but I. I, I loved it. it you was loved super it. Fun. And data structure is my favorite class. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Okay, so you were like, I don't want to do like biomedicine. I want to go into computer science. Mm -hmm. So you changed your major in school and then you graduated. Mm -hmm. How did you end up at Microsoft? Yeah, so it took a while to get to Microsoft. Mm -hmm. I first worked at a startup in Chicago and okay. they were fully remote at the time. And this was before the pandemic, so it was a little bit new as well. And I ended up working in Greece full time. That was a lot of fun. Then I moved over to Target and okay. I learned a lot there. Okay. Um, and this was around 2019, 2020, okay. uh, towards the end of my career at Target. Okay. I started getting a lot of messages from recruiters on LinkedIn. Okay. And these were big tech recruiters. So it, for me, like I had never dreamed about working in big tech. I yeah. come from like a small Midwest town. Right. And so I decided, you know what, let me just give it a shot. So I started interviewing with all these companies. I interviewed with Meta, Google, Reddit, Amazon, wow. Microsoft. And out of all these companies, I got rejected 10 times. So, <laughs> what? Yeah, I got rejected so many times. I was like wow. at the point where even my parents were saying like, you don't even want to work in big tech. Yeah. Why are you trying so hard? You're yeah. stressing yourself out. Like, so, was, so why were you trying so hard? I think it was more of like a personal vendetta. Like I can do it. Like it's yeah. the challenge. Like yeah. I want to, I want to be able to, you know, be good enough to say, hey, I got into big tech. Yeah. And I even told myself some of those companies, if I got in, I wouldn't even take the job, which who knows, maybe I would have because I would have been so excited. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'd gotten to the point where I just felt really low. I was at a low point in my career because mm -hmm. I wasn't getting any acceptances. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had my last interview with Microsoft. And at that point I was a little bit numb, so I didn't really care going into the interview. Okay. And I actually ended up performing my best in that interview. And I got two offers from two different teams at Microsoft. So. That is great. So like, why were, why do you think you were failing the interview? Like what was exactly, was it like the coding round, the DSA mm -hmm. part, like what was it? It was my, I think I was very anxious. Okay. So I have a bit of performance anxiety. The coding part I had practiced a lot. I had done mock interviews with another colleague actually, because he was also looking to go move and he actually ended up going to Google. So we would do mock interviews a lot and I would practice DSA. But I don't think that was enough because when it came time for the interview, I just got really nervous. So okay. unless I knew the problem really, really well, I would kind of stumble over my words. But that's when, you know, after doing so many interviews and getting rejected, yeah. I kind of didn't care anymore. And yeah. that's, I think it was all the nerves at the end of the day. Wow. So you were good at coding. You were good at DSA. You were good at whatever they wanted to know about but you just had like performance anxiety. I think so. That's I don't know if I was like good at all that stuff, but yeah. I think that my biggest problem was the anxiety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's a good point because like I tell people when like it comes to interview prep, like knowing something doesn't mean you're actually gonna perform well in the interview. You mm -hmm. actually have to, because you are working with a stranger mm -hmm. sitting in a room or like a GVC or like a Zoom call, 
and then you don't know how to read their body language, you mm -hmm. don't know how to read their like facial features, yeah. and like you don't know what kind of reaction you are getting or not getting. There's a lot of nerves you have to answer in a specific time frame, and mm -hmm. if you don't get it, then you don't get it. So like doing mock interviews like really really helps you build that confidence. So when you go into that interview, you're able to like perform your best because you have done it and you're numb, like you said. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. You've gone around it so many times. So yeah. that, you know, just it's on automatic for you at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's great. So one thing I wanted to ask you, like you made it to big tech after a few other jobs, like. What did you do uh, while you were in school? Did you have any internships? Why didn't you try for a big tech job when you were in school? Because a lot of the people figured out that they want to go into computer science after they have graduated with another yeah. major, but like mm -hmm. you already knew. So why, yeah. what was that transition? Yeah, so I did have two internships in college and okay. they were very small internships. Again, I went to school in the Midwest, mm -hmm. so um, there wasn't a heavy emphasis on working in big tech. Okay. I went to a heavy research-based school, so okay. a lot of like smaller startup companies that were working on kind of more cutting-edge research stuff. Right. So I worked at a small um, data analytics company for one of my internships, okay. and then a um, healthcare company. Okay. And then from there, I transitioned to a startup after graduating. Okay. But yeah, I didn't really have a desire to work in big tech. There was the culture wasn't really there. I think if I had gone to school in Seattle or in California somewhere, yeah. I think there would have been a much bigger push to go work in big tech. But yeah. the reason I decided to start interviewing was because so many recruiters reached out. So I yeah. would, thought, you know, it's a shame not to at least try. Yeah, just but, to see like what happens. Yeah. And you had like personally you wanted to prove yourself. Exactly. Like On the topic of improving yourself, developing yourself in today's market is very important. Whether you are a software engineer, a data analyst, a data scientist, product manager, or some other role. And there are hundreds of courses and online programs out there. And I know it's hard to choose. One of the platforms that I wanted to recommend is simply learned which is reviewed and recommended by Forbes. They have hundreds of programs in all of these fields from top universities and institutes. Each course has a rating so you know what you're signing up for. For example, if you want to become a data analyst, then this program might be a good fit for you. It teaches all the essential skills such as Python, SQL, Tableau, Excel, along with industry projects to get hands-on experience. And if you're interested in a software engineering career, then this coding bootcamp might be a great start. I'm linking both of these programs in the description below. Thank you, Simply Learn, for sponsoring this portion of the video. Now, let's go and talk about how Pooja ended up with a 2.7 GPA. Would you say like you were a good computer science student when you were in school and that has helped you in your career? So actually, I was a very bad student. Oh. I didn't have a good GPA. Okay. <laughs> uh, what was your GPA? It was a 2.6. What? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 2.6. Okay, for those who don't know, 2.6 is out of 4. Out of 4. And it, what is it? Like A, B, C, D, what grade is it's it? It's like around a B minus C. Wow. Average. <laughs> so, wow. So yeah. what happened? Yeah, so in high school, I was someone who followed the rules. I was kind of by the book. Yeah. But by the time I got to college, I kind of had a few like revelations where I didn't really need to do everything that I was told all the time. I just kind of decided to take more autonomy on what do I think is right for myself. And I wouldn't recommend this for other people, but essentially my general ed classes, I kind of just didn't put any effort into them. And I fully focused on computer science and like things outside of work that I wanted to work on, like passion projects. Okay. And so, for example, there was like an intro to anthropology class. Right. Very easy class. Yeah. All you have to I do is show it. up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got a D. What? <laughs> because I just never showed up to class. And the, the... Did you not know that there will be consequences or like? Yeah, I don't know. I guess I didn't really care as much. I was like, you know what, as long as I do well in computer science yeah. and my math classes, like I had discrete math and algorithms as well, yeah. I thought that companies would overlook it. Yeah. Um, and companies did, but not big tech companies. So right, it was right. difficult to like... Because you have to like go push through a system, automated right. system. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. there were smaller companies that were still willing to hire me just for like the school name, because in that area, it's a very good school. Yeah. But other than that, I think I, I ruined my chances of getting into big tech for, as my first job. So again, I wouldn't recommend that if you want to get into big tech right away, yeah. but it worked out. Like, yeah, I, and you work at Microsoft now, yeah. you literally have a remote job, dream <laughs> for everybody. So I think you're doing very well. So, But like your story is like so inspiring going from 2.6 to now working at big tech and killing it. Like, I don't know if you have shared it on your channel, but you mm -hmm. should definitely like talk more about it. True. Because I'm not going to go back to school, <laughs> but I'm finding it inspiring. So yeah. I'm sure like people who are in school, like will find it so inspiring just to yeah. Just to see, like, it's gonna be okay. Yeah, yeah, of course. I, I think that's the biggest thing, too. Like, for me, I was always so nervous about my future and what's gonna happen. But I think as long as you try your best and you yeah. have, like, a sense of self, 
Yeah. I think, you know, you can, there are things that you can do that you can't imagine that you could have ever done as a kid. Right. So, right. yeah. And the plus side is going and working at that startup because I didn't have a good GPA. That's where I met my fiance in oh, Greece. Wow. So, <laughs> so it worked out. It worked that's out. Me. So one thing I want to ask you about, I think we briefly touched on it, is like working remote. It's mm -hmm. literally everybody's dream job these days. Mm -hmm. How is it like working remotely 100%? Mm -hmm. I know like we, I know about all the perks. Everybody knows about all the perks. Is there any downside to working remote? Do you think it has affected your career growth in mm -hmm. any way or any form? Like, Yeah, so I think, so I worked remote right out of college at that startup. And again, this was before the pandemic. So it was a little bit of a new concept. Mm -hmm. And I think that really hindered my growth because I didn't even know how to like set up my environment. I didn't really know how to do very basic things as a newbie. Um, so I think I was very slow to l the learning curve uh, during that time. And then I had an in-person job at Target. And so okay. that kind of, uh, I had an exponential like growth in that company. And okay. I did really well there and learned a lot. Okay. Um, and then I moved over to Microsoft. That was fully remote. And I think that in terms of learning things, I have no problem now because I've yeah. been to two other companies. I kind yeah. of know how things go. Yeah. The only problem is I think for promotion visibility, maybe it's not the best. Yeah. And then also in terms of mental health, I would like to see my coworkers more. Yeah. But if I had a choice, I think I would be remote. I, I love being remote. I travel a lot. Yeah. Um, and, and I enjoy that lifestyle, I like the digital nomad lifestyle. Yeah. No, that's amazing. I go, I'm hybrid, so I have to go to the office like mm -hmm. three days a week. I have kind of love-hate relationship with the whole hybrid situation, but I don't yeah. think I personally, like it would affect my mental health to not go to the office mm -hmm. uh, because I can get in my own head, but I totally get the perks of like working remote. Mm -hmm. And especially if you're just starting out your career, like I think you brought up a really, mm -hmm. really good point. Like it's easier to, it's like, if somebody's sitting right next to you to learn mm -hmm. something new versus like sending them a message and then waiting for them to respond and then going right. back and forth like so i think remote work is for everybody but i think like there are some like conscious decisions you have to make depending on like which part of your career you are in mm -hmm. because for you like it happens at target your second mm -hmm. job yeah. so something to keep in mind so what are your tips for somebody who wants to become a software engineer what coding languages they should learn is there anything else they should keep in mind yeah, so I have like two separate answers for this, okay. um, kind of post AI and pre AI. So before this whole AI revolution, I would say like learn any language you can. The industry is pretty language agnostic. As long as you learn one, mm -hmm. it's pretty clear that you can probably learn multiple. Right. Um, and so I, I would have done that back then. But now I would say based on the types of jobs you want, I would look for specific jobs online mm -hmm. and then see what's in their nice to haves. Okay. Um, so they have a set of requirements and yeah. then they have kind of like those nice to haves. Yeah. So just make sure you know those languages. And right. some popular languages are Python, very beginner friendly as well. Right. Java and Kotlin, which are object oriented languages. And then also if you want to be more of a front end developer, maybe TypeScript or JavaScript and then HTML and CSS. Those are probably the most popular languages. Okay, that's awesome. And then do you have any resources for people to like learn from? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I personally love learning on YouTube. So if you already know a little bit about programming, YouTube is a great place to go because you can search for exactly what you want yeah. for free. Yeah. And so some channels that I use specifically for data structures and algorithms were Neat Code. Okay. Um, and then I also actually used Algo Expert when I was interviewing. That's okay. a platform online. Yeah, Algo I've heard about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. And so I use that to practice for my interviews. And, and those uh, that platform actually really helped me get my job at Microsoft too. Okay. So no lead code. I did do a lot of leak code. Okay. Yeah, I did. Um, sorry, yeah, I should have mentioned that actually. <laughs> no, that's, that's like, good. I, no, I just wanted to confirm. Like, yeah, yeah, leak yeah. Leak code, a lot of YouTube, yeah. like algorithm expert. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I've heard uh -huh. about it, but I personally haven't used it. Uh -huh. uh, I think it's more yeah. catered toward like software engineering audience. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by the way, Need Code is based in Seattle, which I didn't know yes. until you introduced me to him yeah. last year. Yeah. And you're meeting him tomorrow. I am. Yep. So I, I love his channel. He does a great job like mm -hmm. posting coding videos and so much like interview prep. And yeah. Yeah, it's great. He's so. really good. Yeah, it's very good if you need like more of a structured environment. He yeah. kind of creates that structure for you. That's amazing. Okay, real quick, do you use generative AI as a software engineer in your day-to-day -day job? Yeah, so I use Copilot because I work at Microsoft, so that's kind of the default. I use that on my IDE as well as on my browser. Okay. And then we also have an internal tool that is integrated with ChatGPT. Okay. And all of the data that gets collected is stored at our company, so okay. we can put sensitive information in there, which is okay. really nice because on ChatGPT you can't really do that publicly. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I use 
use those pretty much every day. That's awesome. That's really cool. So let me ask you this. Like, this is something that I'm sure everybody wants to know. Actually, I want to know. Uh -huh. uh, YouTube is a very difficult platform to grow on. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I know it, you know it, uh, other YouTubers know it. Uh, and a lot of the YouTubers, like when they make it big, which you have made big, they end up quitting their day job. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you, why haven't you quit yet? <laughs> I'm asking myself that question, honestly. Me I, too. <laughs> <laughs> I I love YouTube. It's yeah. been my passion. Like ever yeah. since I was a kid. Like I remember when I was 12 years old, I would make these very weird skit videos. Yeah. Thankfully, they're not online anymore. But I used to make videos all the time. So okay. it's it's kind of like my childhood passion. It's okay. something that I think about all the time. I wake up thinking about YouTube. Um, but the problem is, like, I also need to survive. I can't just have a passion and live off of that. So if YouTube were to become a little more stable for me financially, then yeah. I'd totally be open to quitting my job. Yeah. I'm telling you, Microsoft folks, I'm totally <laughs> open to quitting my job, putting that out there. They're watching. Yeah. <laughs> and you're okay with that. You're cool, like, with your coworkers, knowing yeah, yeah, yeah. your aspirations. Your yeah, goals. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I always give, like, very passive aggressive. They were like, do you want to quit your job? <laughs> no, I love my job. I kind of want to quit my and that's job. And Sinless is doing so well in her career. Uh, but you know, like, it's it's great that you are open about it because mm -hmm. I feel like once you put it out there in the world, it mm -hmm. will happen. Yeah. True. For somebody like me who likes to keep it a secret, yeah, yeah. it might never happen because it's a secret. But when you put it out there, you're manifesting. So, right, exactly. So, so it's great. Yeah, it's yeah, awesome. For sure. Cool. So where can people find you? Yes, you can just search for my name, Pooja Dutt, um, on YouTube or Five Foot Traveler on Instagram if you're interested in learning about computer science or just general topics. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you so much. It was thank so you. great chatting with you. Yeah. Uh, and I hope you found the conversation valuable. If you learned something new from this video, let us know in the comments. And I will see you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye. Is it recording? Yeah, it is. Testing, audio, testing, testing, testing. talking, one, two, three, <laughs> three, two, one. Yeah, you hit record. That was no. Oh, you didn't hit record? No. Oh, no.